Hi, this is Amy M. Burns from amymburns.com and author of the new publication Using Technology with Elementary Music Approaches, published by Oxford and available from Oxford and Amazon today. In this episode, it's a sing-along in seesaw style, so it's great for asynchronous learning so that students can just click play and sing along with the singer and their caregivers can sing along as well. And then on the last page, they leave their recording of their favorite song. In this one, it's made with a variety of materials, mostly Canva and Seesaw, though sometimes I did do the follow the bouncy ball technique given to me by David Rao um, on my iPad. And there's another one where I was just using Loom and Google Slides. So stick around, I'm gonna show some of those ways here in the episode today. Feel free to click like and remember to subscribe to the channel to see more episodes. Let's get started. To create the preschool kindergarten songbook, we started with the very basics here, and that is the background image and then starting to make the icons that would link into the other pages with videos. So here is the background image. To create this image, I started over in Canva. Now remember Canva, if you use your educator's email address, will give you a free account with a lot of things, a lot of items and pictures and templates and so many things that makes your presentations and manipulatives look beautiful. So to make that one, I took the this preschool. So what I did first is file and create a new des design using the presentation template and told it to use a presentation size. Then I went to photos and added preschool. So this is the one I want. And if I just drag it a little bit that way, it will turn it into the background. And if I drag it a little further, it will just be a picture. I do want it to be the background. Now, I just was having some fun here and wanted it to have the same background but blurred, kind of how you see that effect when you watch sometimes some of the YouTube clips. They'll have the clip will be centered and clear and then there's the blurry background. So what I decided to do was layer this photo on top of the other photo like this. Then resize it. And again, I love that Canva has the center tool there so you can see that you've centered the picture over the other. Now to blur the bottom layer, you're gonna click on the bottom layer and hit adjust and blur. And that blurs it out. Nice. I'm gonna give it a little bit, that slider a little bit there so that you can see some of the shapes and colors in it. Then I just downloaded it as a PNG. When I'm in Seesaw here making the activity, I uploaded this into the template activity and so I load, uploaded the PNG. Now to start with our first video sing along, I use the shape tool right here of the star and I put the star right here. Then to, of course, do the text, I just double clicked and wrote in the text. And again, in the text, I like the style here because it gets rid of the border. Now to link it over to page two, I'm gonna link the star. So I click on the star, do the three dots, go to link and link to page two. Now we'll click it and we are in page two. So now I'm going to add the video. Here is the video. Now this video, when I originally made it for Katie Wardrobe's course, Katie of midnightmusic.com.au is running a, a video creation course. It's a five module course. It goes for five weeks, but you do it at your own time because it's asynchronous. Now I do work for Katie and I do work for Midnight Music and I am doing this course because it's excellent. Uh, she's really going, she's very thorough. She goes through everything. And our second module here, was to create this video, which is a play along video. So me working outside the box, decided to use the home, virtual home button on the iPad to be a follow the bouncy ball video. And I got that idea from David Rao. So thank you, David. So this is on the second page. They would click play. And then they would just sing along. And they're not recording themselves because if you know Seesaw, you hit the play button, the microphone's not going to allow you to record. However, this is not meant as an assessment tool. This is meant as here's a songbook to give to your students. 
Now let's continue on. To make it easy to go back to the first page, it would be nice if it had a home button or something that they could just click right here that would bring them back to the first page. It would also be nice if this background color matched the color of the icon on this page. So that icon is yellow, so we know that in Seesaw, we hit the three dots, go to the background, and that yellow is pretty close. So now I've changed the background color, and now we need a home button. So I could put a shape here. I could just like take this shape and do something like a little um, G clef, and the G clef could be my home button. And that works quite well. So we're going to hit the three but the three dots, excuse me, go to link and you're going to link it to page one. Perfect. Now what's really great is when I add the next page and we know this home button is going to be on every page, since I'm here um, working on, there we go, since I'm here working on a laptop or a Chromebook, I can do this, but you can't copy and paste when you're on an iPad. And if you do know how to copy and paste to another page, let me know because it wasn't working this week for the Spanish teacher and I. So I'm going to copy this and then go put it here. And I can put this on as many pages as I'd like. And it's going to link back to the same page every time because... That's what we told it to do. To create the Itsy Bitsy Spider video, I used the tools inside of Seesaw as well as tools from Canva. So let me show you how this is done. You start with a blank white slide. And then what I wanted to do was change the background color to blue. It's more exciting, plus it also kind of matched the sky. Now I go into Canva to find my elements. When I'm here in Canva, I found the spider, the gutter spout, the cloud, the sun, and the house all inside of Canva. And you know how much I love Canva. Now, to find the spider, I could have done this, which is just gone into the elements and put in spider and found some great spiders. Not all of them would have worked. Some of them are only six legs. I'm not sure why that is. But, you know, again, I couldn't choose something like that. But there are a lot of eight-leg nice ones, especially this first one I think would have been perfect to use for this video. But I wanted to show you something else here in Canva that I adore. So I'm going to add a page and I'm just, I turn it green on purpose because I wanted you to see this. I'm going to add this photo here of a toy spider with a white background. So the background's not transparent. That's why I made this background green. But I want to remove the background. You'll find a lot of photos that you love here in Canva or even when you're just searching the web, but they're not transparent. But when you're inside of Canva, you can actually click on the picture, click on effects, and it has a background remover. It will sit there and analyze and then remove the background. And then it gives you these little brush tools to help you fine tune it. It's really, really great and I love it. So like when I see this, I'm going to restore and use the brush tool to get back some of the little toy spy spider's body. And so you can do this right inside of Canva. And again, Canva is free for all educators. You know I love this. And then I can, like, I can make it pop and turn it pink. How cool is that? So there's a lot of cool things I can do inside of Canva. And I just wanted to show you that. If you are using some sort of image service already, it might have that built in. If you're finding images that you're allowed to use through Google Image Search, but you can't get that transparent background, take that image and put it into remove.bg. It will also do very similar to what Canva does here. But again, Canva's like a one-stop shop. That's why I love going into Canva, finding graphics I need for educational purposes, being able to remove backgrounds, being able to create GIFs. It's great. So now I'm going to download pages three through seven to use as the elements in my Seesaw video. So I hit the download and PNG file, perfect. That's gonna be a nice file, it's gonna look good. Transparent background, check it. I'm not gonna compress it because I don't need to. These aren't very large files. If I needed to, I would check that box. But the transparent background, yes, because I don't want the green coming with the image. And I don't need all pages. I only need page three, four, five, six, and seven. 
click done and download. They will come as a zip file. When you open that zip file, you will have all the images. Now I'm gonna build it from the back to the front, meaning this is the layer that's going to start. Now, you don't have to because as you know, Seesaw has the ordering ability, so I could order things to the front or back. This is perfect and I'm going to lock it. Now I need the gutter drain. The gutter drain was number four. And I'm going to stick that right onto the house and I'm going to lock it. These are not going to move, so it's fine to lock these images. Now I'm gonna bring in the images that will move. The sun, sun's a little large, so I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Put it here. I'm going to bring in the rain cloud. Put it here. And again, I'm not locking them because we're gonna move them. And now I'm gonna bring in the spider. He's quite big, that's the second verse. The first verse, he needs to be itsy bitsy. And again, he is, or it is more likely because there's no gender on this spider. It is uh, ordered to the front, that's great. If you needed it ordered to the back, you know how to do it, the three dots in order. Now comes the text, bring in the text, go copy the lyrics right here, bring it in and paste, okay? It comes in looking like that. We will fix it so it looks more like this, good. And then resize the font there, perfect. Then to do the big, big, I am just going to put it here. And then we just change itsy bitsy to big, big. And that works beautifully. One of the things though I dislike about the internal mic is I constantly hear the popping of when we start the mic and when we end it because it's gonna pick up everything in the room. So it's like picking up every time you touch your mouse. And I don't particularly like that. So there's a way to make sure that within Seesaw here on my laptop that I'm using my Blue Spark mic. So one of the ways is I'm gonna check the preferences on my device. This might look different on your device, but I'm gonna go into sound and then click input and make sure it's on Blue Microphone Spark Digital. Also, I'm going to go into the settings on Chrome into privacy, go to the microphone and make sure it's also defaulting to blue microphone here. I wanted to default to my better mic, the one that's not going to pick up my mouse click when I click on the microphone tool. So I love that. So now what we're going to do is record myself singing and moving the items on the screen just like your students do. So we hit the little microphone button, start recording. Did you notice that when you start recording there's a little arrow tool. This little arrow tool lets you make tutorial videos that have a pointer. Honestly, I just found this out while I was making this video. So when you see the beginning of the video, it tells you you can follow the spider or you can follow the words. And then you just move around. I go back to the handheld tool and move around your spider while you sing. When you're done, you will click done. And now this has created kind of the screen recording for you. This next step I'm going to do, I'm gonna put it on a blank page. This next step only can be done, sorry, always do that, right? Do you accidentally do that? Always forget to move it to the hand tool. <laughs> this only can be done on a laptop or Chrome top, Chromebook, excuse me, or device. It can't be done on an iOS. The Spanish teacher and I discovered that this week. When you have created this video, now you wanna copy and paste it to page six. You can't do that on an iOS device. If you can, please let me know <laughs> because I haven't been able to figure it out. So I resized it like this. I locked it. I'm not concerned that the play button is over it. And then I also grabbed this, my home button, and put it here. And that's how we created that video. It's a great activity to do. It's a great video to be able to make your own tutorials within Seesaw. Thanks for joining me today on this episode. Click back next week to find more episodes and to see what new activities will be shown. Have a great week.